all right so welcome back guys and welcome to this your first time here i'm vision here with binary team up bring you guys in our video today i'm going to be giving you guys my review for the 100 season 7 episode 5 welcome to bardo now if the 100 is something you're interested in don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below and hit that bell icon that would have missed a more 100 way to content from me moving forward now let's begin we start off this episode with octavia and dioza being brought into bardo from the anomaly on that planet now octavian and deals are quickly separated and octavia is brought in however as she's being brought in she attacks and kills her captors and runs off and she's trying to i guess find a way to escape now i understand from her point of view trying to find a way to escape and everything however i just also feel like it's a little bit of a silly and stupid idea but i understand it so i'm kind of going to give it a pass but i'm also going to take off points for it at the same time but like I said, she runs off trying to escape however she is quickly and easily captured by the disciples and she is then brought forward to MCAP to have her mind, you know, looked into or whatever by Anders and Levitt who we are introduced to. Now, she or originally tries to, you know, fight back. She doesn't want to give them anything. Apparently they're interested in, on information regarding Clark. Which is very interesting we don't really understand why so that's i'm hoping we find that out and she does fight back anders orders levitt to try to push her further but levitt tries to go against that order and wants to take it easy and does kind of sympathize with octavia and while in octavia's mind he does see her history and her past and everything that had happened to her in the past six months seasons now I like that and then he even tells her that you know she's a survivor and everything after seeing everything that she's been through I like that but at the same time I felt like it was a little bit cheesy and unnecessary but I do like that they incorporated that into the story so I'm gonna give it a pass as well um but then you got the two of them working and you eventually got Octavia who decides to stop fighting back once Levitt finds information on Hope and they agree that if he deletes any information about Hope she will comply with them and give them what they want so I like that and I liked how to use Hope in that area and now while they're doing that while Levitt's you know extracting her memories and everything you got a disciple who shows up threatens to kill uh, Levitt and is, comes in to rescue Octavia now Octavia first believes this is Dioza, however, it is quickly revealed that it's actually Hope who came in to rescue her. Now, I did like the reunion there. It was very well done, and I think it was a nice shocker. Instead of having it be Dioza who saved her, have it be Hope. I think that was better used. And again, it, it would make sense with the story, but again, it was better done than rather it be just Dioza. So I like that. And then they enlist Levitt's help to get them to the Anomaly Stone so that they can both get back to Sanctum or we send Octavia back to Sanctum and go rescue Hope's mom Dioza. Now Levitt helps them and brings Hope and Octavia to the stone room. Now once there he tells Hope to give Octavia her disciple suit that way when she returns to her own time she will remember what happened while during her time in Bardo due to time dilation with both planets having different times. However Hope disagrees because she wants to use it to be able to you know go invisible to find her mom however octavia agrees and Levitt comes up with this idea to use old technology to put like this symbol on her back which is the one that you have you have uh gabriel noticed last season so she, she get she's given that that way i guess she can somewhat remember and Levitt goes forward and helps them get ready to leave however before she leaves octavia punches him in the face that way it looks like he didn't help them which i did like i like how they used that that idea to make sense and is good for the story so i like how they use that in as well however he does warn them that as soon as the anomaly is open that you know the alarm will go off and the disciples will come looking for him so they have a goodbye now this is one thing that always annoys me with tv shows and it's not just this one that did it, but you have the alarm going off. The disciples are supposed to be coming anytime soon. And you got Hope and Octavia having this long goodbye to each other. And shows do this every single time, all the time with their shows. And it just always frustrates me. And I get what they're going for, but at the same time, it just is annoying. 
But they end up weaving Octavia returns and we see her return back to what happened last season when she returned to Gabriel. However, you got Hope who goes back off into Bardo to look for her mom. From there we pick up where you got Echo, Gabriel, and Hope arriving on Bardo from where we left off with them in episode 2. And they plan to go look for their missing people. However, before they can even go and look for their people, they are swept up by another group of disciples to tell them that they are needed as there's a big event going on outside and from what we can tell it's a speech being given by the disciple leader Anders and he talks about this event called the last war and how once they do that you know human the human race will be saved or something to that extent I, I, it was kind of confusing to me I don't totally understand so I hope we get some better clarification in the future regarding this whole thing but get them watching this speech and from the speech, Gabriel deduces that these people are not from the Allegis Free crew, which he had originally thought they were, and that they are actually from Earth, and that there must have been an anomaly stone on Earth that brought them to Bardo. So I like how they filled those in that gap and how they weren't the Allegis crew. I think it would have been cool, but at the same time, I, I'm curious to see where this goes, but I kind of would have liked it to be the Allegis crew, but at the same time, we'll just have to see where it ends up going and see if it ends up being good or not. But then you got Hope who while watching this has a flashback to what happened after she went to look for her mom. Now from what I can gather from these scenes is that Hope had been captured from before she could even find her mom. And she is brought back to the stone room by Anders and another group of disciples. And we see the guy that was sent back to talk to Clark in the last episode. And he tell, he gives uh, Hope the tagger to bring Octavia back which we saw her do at the season 6 finale. And she tells Hope to bring her back and to because they need her to give her them information about Quark. You got Hope who does ask why Quark is so important, but they never give us that answer, so I'm hoping we get that answer soon. So we they got Hope who they send back with the tagger and we see her, you know, put the tag on Octavia, which we saw at the end of last season, and then you got Octavia returning there. And you got Anders telling his people that she, he wants her back in MCOP by the end of the day. And, and then you got, at the same time, you get to see him send back the man that we saw from the previous episode. And from what we what they said, after, besides sending him back to find Cork, he also sent back to terminate Hope. Which, which kind of fills in the dots as to why the disciples were trying to kill her in the premiere. Now, from there we got Octavia who was brought back to MCAP. Now, Levitt does show up and tell her that he is no longer being put on her case. I'm assuming due to everything that happened regarding him helping her escape. However, he also informs her that she cannot resist anymore and if she does her brain will hemorrhage. So I like how they add that little thing in and how they brought these two back together again. However, as they're about to begin, you got Am you got Anders who shows up and informs them that her brother showed up, bringing back forward that that part at the premiere where he was kidnapped as well. So you got Octavia who was brought out to try to calm him down, and as we as you see, you got Bellamy who holds one of the disciples at knife point as he had killed a bunch of the other ones that I brought him through as well. And you got Octavia who comes in and tries to calm him down and but he won't listen and he's trying to, you know, say that, look, go back to the sanctum and I'll stay here, everything'll be alright. But back you got Bellamy who's not listening to her and just wants her back. And in the midst of this whole chaos, you have one of the disciples that he had tried, at least tried to kill, I believe, pulls out this little device and an explosion goes off. And amongst the chaos, you got everybody who is blown back. Some are killed and uh, you got Bellamy and this his prisoner are blasted for the anomaly, which Anders had opened uh, to plan on sending Bellamy back to Sanctum. And you got Octavia who drops and is screaming as they try to carry her away. Now, I like how they ended this uh, this part here with this storyline. I will say that I felt like Octavia's acting as she was breaking down was a little over the top. But that's usually what happens. But I still got to take off points there. And I, I like what they did with Bellamy here. I hope he stays dead. I really want him to. Knowing the CW, he's probably going to return. But I, would, I really want to see one of these 
Blake siblings not make it for the series. However, I'm almost positive he's going to come back because just the CW doesn't have the balls to kill off these big characters. Now, we see the death of Bellamy through the eyes of Echo, Octavia, Gabriel, and Hope as they are going through the stuff that they had gathered on from Octavia on the MCAP trials. Now, in a fit of rage, Echo goes forward and kills the guy who is doing the MCAP procedure on Octavia and just kills him and then goes out and screams a never dramatic scene that I think is over the top and ridiculous. Again, that's TV for you, but I'm going to take off points again anyway. Now, meanwhile in this episode, you got another storyline going on regarding the people of Sanctum. Now, following the events of the last episode where Russell's life was spared, the faithful have now decided that until he's fully freed, they are going to set themselves on fire until he is freed, which is extremely stupid for stuff in my opinion. But even Murphy says that why don't they just do it, it'll get rid of one problem, which I honestly agreed with. Like, they should have just gone through with that and done that anyway. Um, but they decide not to and Russell tries to convince them to let him go in and talk to his people However, they eventually decide to let Murphy go in Now Murphy goes in pretending to be Daniel however in midst, amidst the chaos of once he goes in He sees kids that are about to be sacrificed. He stops them from doing that But in the process he is stopped by the rest of the faithful and no, is revealed to be not a, uh, one of the primes in their eyes and captured by the primes or the fateful who planned to put burn him at the stake instead now at once they decide to do this you got russell who and amori and indra who later show up to rescue murphy and once they show up you got you got you got russell aka shenheta who shows up and talks them down and he pretty much like punches one of them and strangles the other one which I don't understand how they did not re realize this was not Russell because like that is like not Russell's behavior towards his people so like I don't understand how they didn't realize that was not him but that's beside the point but he frees Murphy and then gives a speech about how they are costing they are ruining things they're making him look bad this is not what they should be doing and they ask him what he, they should do to prove their faithfulness to him and, you know, be good to in his eyes. At which point, Shinheda tells them to bow before them and kneel or die. Now, this is a very interesting part to the story. As he is, he they all kneel to him. And as this is going on, you got Indra who recognizes those words and Amori realizes there's something wrong with her. And she informs her that she's heard that before. Now, as Russell goes to leave the room, you got Indra who speaks in the grounder language to Russell. And he responds back, revealing that, saying, yeah, too bad you can't kill me. Because he now knows that Indra realizes that he's not Russell. Now, from there, Russell is brought forth to, I think it's like the room where all the bones are in front and he's put before Indra and Indra informs him that yeah we can't kill you but we're gonna keep you alive because to keep the peace but once you're no longer useful to us we will kill you and at that point she does call in Jackson and Nelson and has his mind drive removed and at the same time we do get some information regarding Indra's past and it is revealed that when Shinheda took tree crew that her father had already been killed in the war and her mother did kneel and Indra thought of her as weak. I really enjoyed these scenes and I love the Shinheda stuff. Octavia stuff I could care less about. The Bardo stuff was boring. I just was really into the Sanctum and Shinheda story. I could have gone an entire episode with that. Overall if I had to give this episode a grade I'd give it a grade of probably 8 out of 10 maybe 7.5 the bardo stuff was just kind of boring and confusing and just something i wasn't into i was really into the sanctum stuff and was so it was just a great story so that kind of pushed it up a bit but maybe a 7.5 to 8 out of 10 okay episode just not as good as i feel it should be so yeah guys that's my review of the 100 season 7 episode 5 welcome to bardo as always if you like this video don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and share don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below and hit that bell icon that would miss some more 100 way to content from me moving forward and you can go follow me on instagram and twitter which i link in the bet section of my youtube channel as always this is my vision here on binary entertainment and i'll see you next time